Hey guys, let's get more news from SAN Francisco 49ers, but first don't forget to subscribe to the channel and leave your like. 49ers WR Debo Samuel has no regrets calling Eagles CB James Bradbury trash in offseason. Frank Sinatra once serenaded, regrets, I have a few, but too few to mention. Debo Samuel lives that line. The San Francisco 49ers wide receiver isn't taking back harsh criticism of Philadelphia Eagles corner James Bradbury ahead of Sunday's showdown between the NFC's top two clubs. I don't regret nothing I said, Samuel said Monday when asked about off-season comments regarding Bradbury, per NBC Sports Bay Area. Following the NFC Championship game loss to Philly, Samuel called Bradbury trash during an appearance on the I Am Athlete podcast. The wide receiver doubled down on social media after Bradbury was called for a crucial penalty in the Super Bowl 57 loss. The Niners spent the offseason suggesting they would have beaten the Eagles in the title game had Brock Purdy not been injured early. On Monday, Samuel played a more toned-down message. I don't have any feelings right now, just see how it goes, Samuel said. It's not about revenge. It's another game on the schedule and we're going to treat it like any other game that's athlete speak ahead of a big contest. No other game is against a 10-to-1 defending NFC champion who could be in the way of spending a Super Bowl week on the field instead of on podcasts. Get the popcorn ready. Patrick Willis advances to the semi-finalist round for the Pro Football Hall of Fame Class of 2024. The Pro Football Hall of Fame Class of 2024 announced their semi-finalists on Tuesday morning, and former San Francisco 49ers linebacker Patrick Willis made the cut. Willis, along with 24 other modern-era candidates, advanced from the 173 nominees. This won't be the first time that Willis has advanced. He was a finalist, which is the final 15 members, in each of the past two years. Hopefully, this will be the last time for Patrick as he's named a Hall of Famer. There were a couple of other members from the Niners who advanced to the semi-finalist round. Most recently, Anju Ann Bolden, who was a member of the 49ers from 2013 to 2015, advanced. Running back Ricky Waters, a Niner in the early 1990s, was also a semi-finalist. Willis may not have the longevity as others, but when you're in the NFL for eight seasons and an All-Pro in five of those and a seven-time Pro Bowler, I'd say you've done enough. Willis deserves to be a Hall of Famer, whether it's this year or down the line. Former 49ers linebacker Patrick Willis advanced to the semi-finalist round for the Pro Football Hall of Fame Class of 2024, it was announced Tuesday morning. Willis was named among the top 25 modern-era candidates from the original list of 173 nominees. He advanced to the final 15 the past two years. Running back Ricky Waters, who played for the 49ers from 1992 to 94, and wide receiver Anju and Bolden, a member of the 49ers from 2013 to 15, are also among those advancing to the semifinalist round. Two first-time eligible candidates made the cut to semifinalist, tight end Antonio Gates and defensive end Julius Peppers. Both last played in the 2018 season. To be eligible for the Pro Football Hall of Fame, an individual must not have participated as an active player for five consecutive seasons. Running back Tiki Barber, in his 12th year of eligibility, was the only other first-time semifinalist. Willis was a seven-time Pro Bowl player in his eight NFL seasons. He was named first-team All-Pro five times and was selected to the NFL All-Decade team for the 2010s. The current list of 25 will be reduced to 15 finalists in voting among the 50-member selection committee at a later date. A maximum of five modern-era candidates can be elected into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. The committee will select the class of 2024 in advance of Super Bowl 58 in Las Vegas. The class will be announced live on the NFL Honors telecast scheduled to air February 8. In addition to the modern-era candidates, the committee will also consider coach-slash-contributor Buddy Parker and seniors finalists Randy Gratishar, Steve McMichael and Art Powell. There is no set number for any class of enshrines, but the bylaws for the selection committee provide that between four and nine new members will be selected. Eagles veteran takes a jab at the 49ers. Each season when the NFL schedule comes out there are a few games worth circling on the calendar. One of those games this year is between the Philadelphia Eagles and San Francisco 49ers. It is a rematch of last year's NFC Championship game, but the 49ers are out for revenge. 
In that NFC Championship, the 49ers lost both their starting and backup quarterback. They were unable to complete passes for almost the entire second half of the game. San Francisco was unable to play how they wanted and they are hoping to make a statement this year. Eagles edge rusher Hasan Reddick talked about what the 49ers were saying after last year's game. According to Sports Radio 94 WIP, Reddick said, It was a lot of boo-hoos last year, a lot of crying, a lot of what if, a lot of this, a lot of that. There is no doubt that these two teams do not like each other. A rivalry has been brewing since the end of last season, and now they meet with plenty on the line. San Francisco is coming into the game at 8-3 while the Eagles are 10-1. Yet, the 49ers are road favorites in this game. Many sportsbooks are not believers in the Eagles despite only having one loss. Luckily for the fans, it seems like both teams should be close to full health heading into the game. There is more on the line for the 49ers in this game as they need to win to keep hope for the number one seed alive. Having home field advantage is vital and the 49ers winning this one can help them get closer to the number one seed. It has certainly been a horrible season for NFL officiating, yes? No matter which team you call your own, you can point to one obvious example in which your team has been hosed by a group of officials that are inconsistent at best and incompetent at worst. Here at Touchdown Wire, we've written about the league's awful product all season, but it's going to be very difficult to top the no-call in the game between the Buffalo Bills and the Philadelphia Eagles for sheer WTF status. Here was the situation. With 1.34 left in the second quarter, and the Bills up 10-7, Eagles edge rusher Hasten Reddick pressured Bills quarterback Josh Allen. In the process, Reddick tore the front of Allen's jersey at the collar, and clearly grabbed the back of Allen's jersey at the collar. And that part of the play, per the NFL rulebook, is a horse-collar tackle. Per ESPN's Kevin Seifert, instead, Allen was called for intentional grounding, despite the fact that there were two receivers in the direct vicinity of his throw. Sean Hotchley's crew really blew this one. And this despite the fact that there was an official looking directly at the play from a couple yards behind. And you fan, what do you think of the Hasten Reddick situation? Leave your opinion in the comments.